We begin our look at Manhattan's West Side elevated lines with a fragment of a newsreel or publicity film made in the 1920s concerning James J. Ryan, now in his 50th year as a motorman on New York's elevated lines, which meant that he had to start in the steam days in the 1870s. In the Ryan home, his grandson is seen playing with an American flyer wind-up train. And in the morning, he reports for duty at 155th Street and 8th Avenue and takes a southbound 9th Avenue elevated train out of the station and downtown. Coming around the high curve at 110th Street and 8th Avenue, he proceeds with his train southbound And, of course, the, some of these scenes are done at fast motion to accelerate the uh, motion of the elevated train. Central Park, as seen from the high curve at 110th Street and 8th Avenue. The Cathedral of St. John the Divine on Morningside Heights. And we head downtown. His train pulls around Battery Park and into the South Ferry Station. Unfortunately, there the newsreel film ends, and we have some other views now of a northbound 6th or 9th Avenue elevated train uh, at Rector Street Station. I'm sorry, this is a 6th Avenue elevated train heading north at Rector Street on Church Street. And a 6th Avenue train heading uptown in Manhattan, midtown Manhattan. The 6th Avenue line originally extended to 6th Avenue and 58th Street. Looking straight ahead, you see the remains of the st stub leading to 58th Street. But when the line was connected to the 9th Avenue L, the connection was made across 53rd Street, and our train has turned from 53rd Street and 6th Avenue across 53rd Street and to the connection with the 9th Avenue L which you see here at 53rd Street and 9th Avenue. The southbound train on the left is a 9th Avenue local. There is a northbound 9th Avenue local. The upper level at the left carries the 6th Avenue and the 9th Avenue expresses oh, over the junction. Now we're on a 9th Avenue northbound express coming off Greenwich Street and turning on to 9th Avenue and heading north into the 14th Street station. 14th Street, 34th Street, and 66th Street were express stations with two levels on the 9th Avenue elevated line. Here's another view of the 14th Street station, this time approaching from a northbound local. Here's the 34th Street Station, and a quick view of the Pennsylvania Railroad and Long Island Railroad Yards as we cross over them. Here is the junction at 53rd Street and 9th Avenue, where the 6th Avenue L came in from the right. Here are the switches north of 53rd Street, which allowed 6th Avenue trains to move into the express track. 59th Street Station was a local stop, as was 42nd Street. Typical view under the 9th Avenue elevated line at street level and we head northbound now through 59th Street Station and heading farther uptown. Way uptown now we're approaching 110th Street a southbound local is seen turning from 110th Street into 9th Avenue or Columbus Avenue as it's called here and heading downtown our train is heading northbound and now turning east into 110th Street for the one block run over to 8th Avenue and will then continue northbound. The 110th Street station was in the block between Columbus and 8th Avenues and was the highest point on any elevated railway in Manhattan or the Bronx or Brooklyn. The uh, track level was about 80 feet above street level here and there was an elevator building that brought passengers to and from the elevated levels. Now we're 
We have made our local stop at 110th Street and are turning north around the high curve level with the fifth story of a six-story building and heading northbound into 8th Avenue for our run up to 155th Street. This view from the northwest corner of Central Park showed a southbound 8th and 9th Avenue railway streetcar heading south and a view of the high curve with a local train turning north into 8th Avenue. We're looking north up 8th Avenue now. 112th Street looking west with the Cathedral of St. John and the Divine in the background and the high elevated structure which Jim Ryan rode over earlier in the film. The 116th Street station was also very high and had an ele elevator building to bring passengers to and from the uh, street level and elevated station. At 116th Street and 125th Street the platforms were offset with each other so that downtown expresses stopped only at the downtown platform in the morning rush hour and only at the uptown platform in the evening rush hour. Uptown Expresses used the upper level flyover there to get to the east side of the 155th Street station. Uptown locals terminated on 125th Street and most of them took the track to the left under the express track and went over to the west platform of the 155th Street station which had two double track platforms. Ahead may be seen a streetcar on the viaduct leading to the 155th Street Bridge, the McCombs Dam Bridge. The L went right under the bridge and came into the 155th Street Station, which was immediately north of the bridge and which had stairways leading up to the bridge as well as down to the street. <coughs> we are pulling into the west platform at the 155th Street Station and looking down from the 155th Street viaduct there was a northbound local doing the same thing. Here we have a two-car shuttle train of former subway cars with wooden bodies, composite cars so to speak, coming out of the 159th Street yard with the polo grounds in the background. This was the largest L yard in the city. The yard and the stub into the Bronx were left in place after 1940 when the 6th and uh, ni when the 9th Avenue L was discontinued and shuttle trains continued to run uh, across the Putnam Bridge from 155th Street to the Jerome Avenue line until 1958. Now we're riding a train it could be either a 9th Avenue train a 6th Avenue train or a shuttle train across the Putnam Bridge over the Harlem River in, into the Bronx. The station on the other side of the bridge is the Sedgwick Avenue station where there was a transfer point to the New York Central Railroad's Putnam Division which terminated here at its southernmost end. From the Sedgwick Avenue station the trains proceeded through a tunnel under the Ogden Avenue Ridge and came out at Anderson Avenue. We see here a shuttle train of the wooden bodied composite cars coming across the Putnam Bridge and into the Sedgwick Avenue station. Now we're coming through the tunnel and emerging at the Anderson and Jerome Avenue stations. The station had two entrances, the upper level from Anderson Avenue and the lower level from Jerome Avenue. Heading eastward now from the Anderson and Jerome Avenue station we are approaching the Jerome Avenue IRT elevated subway extension and we will turn underneath the
the subway tracks and rise up between them to join the IRT Jerome Avenue line at 167th Street Station. In the days of the 9th and 6th Avenue elevated lines, through express trains ran all the way to Burnside Avenue, and at rush hours, some of them went to Fordham Road, where they then laid up in the middle tracks. But after 1940, uh, even though some of the shuttle trains went to Burnside Avenue, most were cut back to 167th Street, and the line became known simply as the 167th Street to 155th Street Shuttle. Here's the two-car train of wooden-bodied former subway cars now used on the elevated division. Now we're back on the 9th Avenue Elevated, riding a downtown express, heading downtown and looking out the rear as we pass by a southbound local train on the left and an uptown local on the right. We're passing by the Museum of Natural History at 77th Street and Central Park, at 86, 81st Street and Central Park West. And we see some views along the 9th Avenue L as we head downtown. This appears to be 66th Street Station. Yes, it is. We're looking out the rear of a train as the 9th Avenue L crosses Broadway at Lincoln Square. Long, looking out the rear, probably of the same train, passing the old Hippodrome, which was a large indoor theater and... Uh, presentation hall at 44th Street and 6th Avenue on the east side. There's the 42nd Street station of the 6th Avenue L and we're looking out now from the rear of a train passing Bryant Park, Stern's department store on the right in the background and heading down toward 34th Street. There's a view of the Times building at Times Square and on the left is the New York Herald building, the newspaper office where the New York Herald was edited and printed. So, and looking out the front of a train coming into the 33rd Street station in the early 1920s, Looking down from the Masonic Building at 23rd Street and 6th Avenue, we're looking north here at the 6th Avenue L with the 23rd, uh, 28th Street station visible in the distance. There's a southbound 6th Avenue train approaching the 23rd Street station. This is looking south from the 6th Avenue L at 3rd Street as it turns off 6th Avenue and heads, west, uh, heads east on 3rd Street uh, uh, to get farther downtown. In those days, before the 6th Avenue subway was built, 6th Avenue did not extend south of the Washington Square area. And when, it was, when the 6th Avenue subway was built, uh, a lot of uh, blocks were cleared through to make a southern extension of 6th Avenue. Now we're looking out the back of a 6th Avenue train leaving Rector Street Station and on the left we are joining the 9th Avenue elevated where uh, uh, Trinity Street and Greenwich Street come together. This is down near the financial district with many tall buildings of lower Manhattan overshadowing the streets and the elevated lines. Here we are running along Greenwich Street heading toward Battery Place in Lower Manhattan on the 9th Avenue Elevated. And at Battery Park, the uh, 6th and 9th Avenue L's, which had come together into one structure there, skirted the park on its easternmost edge to get from Battery Place and Greenwich Street down to the South Ferry Terminal. We're looking out the back of a train, a southbound train, leaving Battery Place Station. The station was on an S-curve, and the 
elevated line snaked its way around the curving edge of Battery Park to get to the South Ferry Station. Looking out the front of a train doing the same thing, leaving Battery Place Station and curving its way down along the eastern edge of Battery Park. There's a northbound train. This view is from the street. There's a southbound train approaching the South Ferry Terminal along the eastern edge of Battery Park. A sharp curve took the west side elevated lines into the South Ferry Station, which was a joint station with the 2nd and 3rd Avenue elevated trains. The east side lines had their platform and the west side lines had their platform. This aerial view clearly shows the 9th Avenue elevated coming down off Greenwich Street, curving along the eastern edge of Battery Park and into South Ferry. Now we have a, an old newsreel clip here uh, showing the scrapping of the 9th Avenue elevated line after 1940. It was discontinued in June of 1940, south of 155th Street. We have some views here. Uh, uh, this view is the uh, last run of the 6th Avenue L in December 1938. And here are the wrecking crews going to work on the 9th Avenue elevated, removing the line piece by piece. There's the remains of one of the double deck stations. The 2nd Avenue and 9th Avenue elevateds had round circular section pillars made of cast iron sections bolted together and filled with concrete, whereas the 6th and 3rd Avenue elevated lines had the more usual H-beam pillars. These views are in Upper Manhattan along 8th Avenue north of 155th Street. Here are some views along Greenwich Street in Lower Manhattan, where the four-track L structure spanned the entire street. Now from Manhattan, we go to Brooklyn. We are riding from Park Row in Manhattan across the Brooklyn Bridge on an elevated train, chasing a trolley car, which in those days operated on the roadway of the bridge. We're on the Brooklyn side, now coming around the curve into the big Sand Street train shed. This was the main level of the Sand Street train shed, used by both elevated trains coming off the Brooklyn Bridge and by trolleys coming off the Brooklyn Bridge. This train is coming off the Brooklyn Bridge and turning into Sand Street, just as we did in the previous scene. Now we're looking out the rear of a train, having left Sand Street, and heading out onto the Fulton Street Elevated. There's a trolley car ramping up to the L level, and another elevated train heading in and out. This was quite a complex of track work when the uh, Brooklyn Elevated Lines were in their heyday. That was a Myrtle or Lexington Avenue train heading into Adams Street. We are curving through Fulton Yard and out onto the Fulton Street L itself. In the distance on the left may be seen the part of the Fulton Street L coming from Fulton Ferry, which was in service for rush hours only down through 1940. The Fulton Street L was a two-track line, although the outer parts of it had been rebuilt to three tracks in the 1920s. And we see elevated trains here from Court Street and Borum Place heading outward, a uh, probably a rush hour or uh, turn back train near Franklin Avenue. This is at Fulton Street and Franklin Avenue with the overpass. The overpass was there for a connection to the Brighton Beach line which had become the Franklin Avenue shuttle which still exists as this is being recorded. The Fulton Street line continued out on Fulton Street past Franklin Avenue, Bedford Avenue, Nostrand Avenue, and so on, and wound up eventually at uh, Broadway Junction near Atlantic Avenue. Here's a train of Type C cars, which were three car sets that were converted from open platform cars in the 1920s. 
They were used almost exclusively on the Myrtle Avenue Elevated, in addition to the open platform types of cars that you see here. In that case, the 1300 series. Here's an outbound Fulton Street L train heading toward the complex at Broadway Junction. Now at the lower left is a train of C types heading from the outer part of the Fulton Street L toward the downtown area on Fulton Street as seen from Broadway Junction, East New York. And an outbound train of open platform cars coming from downtown and heading into the Broadway, East New York complex. We're looking out the back of a train here which is turning from the Fulton Street L into the Broadway Junction Atlantic Avenue complex and in the distance is the 14th Street Canarsie line coming up out of the tunnel and through Broadway Junction and here we are at Atlantic Avenue which was shared by Fulton Street and uh, Canarsie trains this is a Fulton Street train of C-type cars. Out beyond Atlantic Avenue, the line turned back into uh, Fulton Street, headed out to the S-curve at Pitkin Avenue, and then turned onto Liberty Avenue for its run out to Lefferts Boulevard and, uh, in Queens. The train here is making the turn at Pitkin Avenue. and turning on to Liberty Avenue now for its run outbound to Lefferts. Another train of C-types heading downtown. The first three or four stations on this part of the line along Liberty Avenue were of the old Brooklyn Rapid Transit type, uh, but out uh, beyond the uh, city line, the borough line actually, they became the newer type built on the extension built in the 1920s out to Lefferts Avenue. Here's a work train heading along the Fulton Street L, probably uh, picking up benches and other surplus material in preparation for abandoning the line. The outer part of the Liberty Avenue line today is still in use by uh, subway trains from the independent A line, the Fulton Street subway, heading out to Liberty Avenue and also to the Rockaways. We saw a train in the previous scene heading out from Lefferts Boulevard, heading downtown. Now we are approaching Atlantic Avenue from the outer side, that is the Queen side, on a downtown Fulton Street train, heading into Atlantic Avenue and the Broadway Junction complex, also shared by Canarsie Line trains. There is a C-type as seen from a Canarsie train, and on the left is a Canarsie train as seen from one of the Fulton street elevated trains, both heading downtown, that is toward Manhattan. The Canarsie line takes the upper level and heads into the Broadway Junction Station. The Fulton Street line takes the lower level and turns into the Fulton Street L itself. Some of these scenes were taken after the Fulton Street L was truncated at Rockaway Parkway, uh, Rockaway Avenue, I'm sorry, and uh, the uh, portion of that from there to downtown was eliminated. Until the 1950s, the Liberty Avenue trains continued to shuttle back and forth between Rockaway Avenue and Fulton Street and Lefferts Avenue. Thus, the Rockaway Avenue station, which had a center platform added, became a stub station with a paper transfer to the Fulton Street IND subway down below. Now we're back at Sand Street. We're heading out a train that has just come from Manhattan, and instead of following the Fulton Street line, which we see straight ahead, we are turning left to go down the Fifth Avenue Elevated, one of the other old Brooklyn Elevated lines. Here's a train turning off Washington Street at the Adams Street Station and onto Myrtle Avenue. And we see more of that here. The Adams Street Station 
house itself was at the corner, the intersection, but the platforms were in the block so as to keep them off the curve. We're looking out the front of a train now that has just turned from Washington Street into Myrtle Avenue, and we are now on the Fifth Avenue Bay Ridge Line, crossing under the Fulton Street elevated line at Fulton Street. This is seen from the Fulton Street L station. The train there is a, uh, a train on the Fifth Avenue elevated. The previous scene was a northbound train. This is a southbound train. We're looking out the back of a train on the Fifth Avenue elevated, having crossed under the Fulton Street line in the distance, and heading south now, turning off at Flatbush Avenue and onto Fifth Avenue itself. These are various scenes along Fifth Avenue in Brooklyn heading down toward 36th Street. Looking out the back of a train at first and now looking out the front of a train heading southward along Fifth Avenue. The trees at the upper part of the picture are part of Greenwood Cemetery, which the Fifth Avenue elevated passed right by. There's a northbound Fifth Avenue train heading for either Sand Street or for Manhattan. And we are approaching 36th Street, which consisted of two double-track platforms. And the 36th Street station was used as a junction for the Culver branch and for the Bay Ridge branch. Southbound train arriving at 36th Street and looking out the back of a southbound train arriving at 36th Street and preparing to go down the Culver Line. Here's 36th Street Station at 5th Avenue. We are just leaving, looking out the back of a train, taking the curve, crossing the northbound tracks at grade, and heading into the 36th Street Yard, through which the main tracks run to get over to 9th Avenue Station. They join the West End Line there, and then continue down the Culver elevated tracks. The Culver trains use the lower level of the 9th Avenue station, whereas the West End trains coming from the 4th Avenue subway use the upper level of 9th Avenue station. We have a few views of yard moves here. That three-car train looks like it's going through the yard from 9th Avenue over to 5th Avenue. And we pass by trains in storage in the 9th Avenue yard during off hours, looking out the rear of a Culver elevated train. Subway cars as well as uh, elevated cars are clearly in evidence on the storage tracks. The subway cars would be for West End trains and the L cars for Culver trains. The Culver line at that time was not yet connected to the independent subway. It was operated as an elevated line from Sand Street or from Park Row. There's a Culver elevated train having come off Fifth Avenue through the yard and is heading into the Ninth Avenue station. And a West End train coming from the yard and either making yard moves or heading into service at the upper level of 9th Avenue Station. More views in the area of the 36th Street and 9th Avenue Yard. That seems to be a Culver elevated train heading over toward 5th Avenue for its run to Sand Street or Park Row. That train was a yard move. Here's a Culver elevated train southbound toward Coney Island emerging from the 9th Avenue station lower level. And here's a Culver Elevated train approaching Coney Island, coming down uh, uh, Shell Road and into the West 8th Street Station, at which point 
The Culver elevated trains use the lower level and the Brighton Beach local subway trains use the upper level. So this was one station of several in New York where the elevated trains were under the subway trains. This is at West 8th Street with a northbound Culver elevated train turning onto the Culver line. Trains from the lower level could also go via the Brighton Beach line, but that was seldom done. The Brighton Beach line was primarily uh, used uh, primarily the upper level. Here's a Culver elevated train leaving Stillwell Avenue, Coney Island, heading out onto the double deck L structure, which will bring it to West 8th Street, and from there it will turn northward onto Shell Road and proceed up McDonald Avenue toward uh, the uh, 9th Avenue and 36th Street area. We're back at 36th Street and 5th Avenue now, and we're going to take a ride from here down the other branch, the Bay Ridge 3rd Avenue elevated. Yes, Brooklyn had a 3rd Avenue elevated too. We will see that briefly. During off hours, the Bay Ridge train was a one-car shuttle that either shuttled back and forth between 65th Street and 36th Street or was attached to or detached from Culver Elevated trains at 36th Street. We're looking out the back of a one-car Bay Ridge Elevated train. To, uh, in this view, we're looking north on 5th Avenue. That one-car train has just left the 36th Street station and has turned westward onto 38th Street. And here we are looking out the back of a train heading down 38th Street from 5th Avenue to 3rd Avenue and turning southward onto 3rd Avenue for the run down to Bay Ridge. There, this is a quick view of 3rd Avenue as it was before any Gowanus Highway was built. And when the highway was built, some of the pillars from the elevated structure uh, were used in construction of the highway. There is the 65th Street Terminal of the 3rd Avenue elevated over the Long Island Railroad's tracks leading down to Bay Ridge Yard. Here's a trolley on the 3rd Avenue trolley line that headed farther south on uh, 3rd Avenue toward Bay Ridge. A northbound trolley coming up 3rd Avenue and heading north on 3rd Avenue and uh, at the left background may be seen a ramp which at one time was used by trolleys from the 3rd Avenue line coming up the ramp to the elevated train level from which passengers had a convenient transfer to the elevated trains. That ramp was not used in later years however. The surface cars continued on the surface uh, instead of ramping up to the elevated level. Now we're going to ride the 3rd Avenue elevated again back northward to 36th Street. Here we are leaving the 65th Street terminal, heading uptown, northbound, and arriving at 36th Street. That car has just come off 38th Street, as this one is doing, and is turning into 5th Avenue and coming up to the 36th Street station. Seen from street level, we see a 3rd Avenue elevated single car atta being attached to a Culver elevated train which has arrived at 36th Street before the 3rd Avenue train. They're coupled together and we're heading back downtown now toward Sand Street and Park Row. We'll have a brief look now at the Myrtle Avenue and Lexington Avenue elevated lines as they were then. <laughs> Lexington Avenue runs parallel to Myrtle for some distance and the stations on the Myrtle Avenue and Lexington Avenue lines were at the same cross streets. That train is coming out of the Lexington Avenue L at Grand Avenue and is turning onto the Myrtle Avenue elevated, heading down either to Sand Street or to Manhattan. Here's a view from a rooftop of a Lexington Avenue train coming out of Grand Avenue and turning onto Myrtle. Here's a northbound Myrtle Avenue train passing through the junction which was at grade and heading out toward Metropolitan Avenue. Here's a northbound Lexington Avenue train passing the same junction but this one is turning the sharp curve to the right into Grand Avenue and will head over to the Lexington Avenue elevated. There were stations at Grand Avenue on both the Myrtle and Lexington Avenue lines but on the Lexington Avenue line there was no outbound platform. The theory was that if you wanted to go to Grand Avenue from downtown Brooklyn, you took a Myrtle Avenue train and got off. This is riding a Lexington Avenue train turning 
into the Myrtle Avenue line and heading toward downtown Brooklyn. Same scene here. Here's an outbound Lexington Avenue train seen from the Grand Avenue platform of the Lexington Avenue line. This train is turning from Myrtle Avenue into Grand and heading out on the Lexington Avenue line. It will not stop at Grand Avenue because there's no platform on the outbound side. There in the background is a southbound Myrtle Avenue train heading downtown from Grand Avenue, passing the junction at Great. This is the DeKalb Avenue station on Grand Avenue, on the Lexington Avenue elevated. And beyond DeKalb Avenue, the train made an S-curve, continuing on Grand Avenue over to Lexington. and then made another curve onto Lexington Avenue and headed north, joining the Broadway line near Gates Avenue. The Lexington Avenue L was a very narrow two-track structure with outside platforms, whereas the Myrtle Avenue elevated was a wider two-track structure with island platforms between the tracks. This was a pleasant way to ride an elevated train, take a 1300 series convertible car in the summertime with the sides removed and bars installed, seats reversible so you could chat with your companions and enjoy the breeze, or you could stand out on the platform where the conductors work the gates as you saw there. Now we're riding the Myrtle Avenue line, passing Hudson Avenue where the 5th Avenue elevated line turned off. And now we're approaching Grand Avenue where the Lexington Avenue elevated line turned off. This is a Myrtle Avenue train heading outbound, so we rode right past the junction at Grand Avenue. And here we are between Fresh Pond Road and Metropolitan Avenue near the outer end of the Myrtle Avenue line, where the elevated tracks ramp downtown to Grand Level and running along an embankment over the Long Island Railroad's old Montauk Division and finally terminate at a ground level station at Metropolitan Avenue. A downtown Myrtle Avenue train is just pulling out of the Metropolitan Avenue terminal and is heading toward Fresh Pond Road and then toward downtown Brooklyn. We see it going up the ramp here onto the elevated structure. And here we ride on a train past the Fresh Pond Yards, first the trolley yard and then the subway and elevated car yard, all on ground level between Metropolitan Avenue and Fresh Pond Road. Now we rise up onto the elevated structure at Fresh Pond Road, and here we are arriving at Sand Street train shed back in downtown Brooklyn.
some views of Myrtle and Fulton Street trains at Sand Street. There is an inbound, that is Manhattan bound, Fulton Street L train heading through Sand Street train shed. Here's a trolley car having ramped up from the street level to the elevated level and it will also make a station stop at the L level in the Sand Street train shed. Now we see an elevated train leaving Sand Street for Park Row heading across the Brooklyn Bridge. Now it's 1944 and we're going to take one last ride across the Brooklyn Bridge on an elevated train. There is the Brooklyn Bridge station in, at Park Row in Manhattan adjacent to the City Hall elevated station of the IRT Manhattan elevated lines. Now we're going to ride the front of an elevated train heading out of the Park Row train shed and across the Brooklyn Bridge. This was hardly a week before the line across the Brooklyn Bridge was abandoned. We're heading eastbound now out of the Park Row terminal in Manhattan just as the opening scene showed this time in color and heading across the Brooklyn Bridge as it was then configured over to Sand Street in Brooklyn. After the elevated trains were discontinued the trolleys were moved into the elevated tracks where they continued to operate until 1950. Here we approach the Sand Street train shed and we leave the Sand Street train shed on what is a Myrtle or a Lexington Avenue train, the Fulton Street L having been discontinued by this time and the uh, Bay Ridge and Culver uh, Fifth Avenue elevated trains had also been discontinued. We turn across Washington Street on, to, uh, on uh, crossing uh, Adams Street and we stop at the Adams and Myrtle station and then turn onto Myrtle Avenue. This part of Myrtle Avenue doesn't exist anymore. It, uh, it's all a park and uh, parking garage now. Here's the Bridge Street station which as you can see is being extended into the Bridge and J Street station. That would be the downtown terminal of the Myrtle Avenue L after the bridge service was eliminated. There is the Adams and Myrtle station. The station house itself was at the uh, junction of the streets but the platforms were in the block uh, to keep them on straight track. This train is heading out of Sa Sand Street back onto the Brooklyn Bridge for its run to Park Row but instead of completing that run we're going to look at the panorama of the Sand Street train shed from one of the tall buildings in downtown Brooklyn. There's the Sand Street train shed with the Manhattan Bridge way in the distance and looking down on it we see trolleys and elevated trains moving in and out of the terminal. Some of the trolleys that went across the Brooklyn Bridge did so from street level under the Sand Street train shed. Other trolleys ramped up to the Sand Street train shed and used the main level next to the elevated trains on the outside and then swung onto the Brooklyn Bridge for their run to Manhattan. Those are Myrtle or Lexington Avenue elevated trains turning uh, into and out of the Sand Street train shed, crossing Adams and Washington Streets and heading over to Myrtle Avenue. Here's an elevated train just left Sand Street and is turning over into the Myrtle Avenue line. There on the left is a trolley which has just left Sand Street and will take the ramp down to street level and will operate on any one of a number of various surface routes in Brooklyn. A trolley there has just ducked under the elevated structure and in the distance may be seen rising up behind the elevated train toward the Sand Street main level. Here's an elevated train from either Myrtle or Lexington Avenue turning into the Sand Street train shed. and another elevated train leaving Sand Street heading out onto the Myrtle Avenue line.
various streets crossed underneath the elevated uh, section south of Sand Street, many with trolleys on them so that the trolley lines could use the Sand Street complex. That trolley on the left is ducking down the ramp. and reappears over here at street level from which it proceeds to one of the various Brooklyn surface routes. That trolley in the lower part of the picture has entered the ramp and is seen in the distance there moving up the ramp and into the Sand Street elevated terminal. That trolley is doing the same thing. There's an old Bulldog Mack truck and a Brooklyn PCC car still in its old tan paint scheme. This is 1944, remember. Here's a trolley which has just come across the Brooklyn Bridge through Sand Street and is emerging onto the street level. Down at Coney Island Yard, the elevated cars were brought there, having become surplus upon the discontinuation of most of the Brooklyn ele elevated system in 1940. Some of the L cars were scrapped, others just lay there uh, supplying parts for the few remaining elevated trains still in use on uh, Myrtle Avenue and Lexington Avenue. Still others became work cars and powered work trains. That car with the two white stripes at the lower lip of the sill uh, indicates that it's fitted with uh, subway type third rail shoes so that it uh, can operate as uh, work trains on the uh, elevated extensions of the BMT subway. There's a Culver subway train coming from the Culver subway line via the 4th Avenue subway and the Manhattan Bridge from the Center Street Loop in Manhattan. The Culver subway trains shared the Culver elevated structure with the Culver elevated trains from the 5th Avenue Bay Ridge line until 1940, when the elevated service was discontinued. A few views of these forlorn-looking elevated cars, and that brings our look at the Brooklyn elevated system.